Hey there, my fellow designers and creatives. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome to this introductory video on my Rive and Play tutorial series. If you already have context of Rive and Play, you're more than welcome to skip this video and jump to the next one. But if you're looking to get some context and understand, is Rive and Play something you should actually learn? Is it really helpful? What can you actually use it for on your personal projects or at the company you work at, right? Then this video is going to be really helpful to you. Now, before I get into Rive and Play, I'm going to show you the final result, basically the entire animation product type that we're going to be creating. Now I am mirroring this on my phone, which means you can actually control this on your phone. Now I'll give a QR code that you can scan at the end of the video. So you can check out this prototype right on your phone, like right now. But let me just show you the animation that we're going to do over here. So this is inspired from Duolingo's animation. And essentially this is a score. At the end of a quiz, there's a score that is calculated. And then there is an animation that happens depending on the score. Pretty similar to most games out there. Angry Birds is a very great example, right? So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and enter a particular score because obviously we don't have a score. And let's see what happens. Now there are basically three milestones. Each of them have a different score. So this is at 600, this is at 780, and this one is at 1000. So if I go and click on the input field, now ideally there should be a keyboard showing up over here, but because of this mirroring issue, the keyboard is not visible. But if you viewed this on your phone, you would essentially see a keyboard. So let me go ahead and enter a value of 1000 points. So 1000 is the maximum that I can score. And when I press enter, the keyboard closes, the button becomes active and I can tap on it as many times as I want. I can change this to maybe 600, let's say, let's try 600, I press enter. And now when I press start and I release my finger, you can see it's an actual button that I can interact with. It goes ahead and plays the animation that you see over here, right? If I chose 1000, it would do a complete circle and it would activate all the stars, right? So as you can see, this is very dynamic. This is very interactive. This is very realistic. This almost looks like somebody built this using code, right? But there is no code over here at all. All of this is using Rive and Play. And that's what we're gonna understand. Now, I'm gonna share only a few things over here because you can come to the website and check out everything. Essentially, it's like Lottie on steroids. Lottie is extremely limiting with pretty much a lot of things that you can do. And Rive takes things to a whole new level and it makes interactions and animations so much easier and actually possible to really do. Many years ago, it would have been very difficult to even imagine something like this was possible, but Rive is really enabling us to bring our visions to life. So I'm gonna show you a couple of use cases over here and a lot of companies have already started using this. They've been using this for a while now. For example, Duolingo themselves have been using it. And I highly recommend you check out this video. I'll probably leave a link down in the description where they actually explain how they actually use Rive. And before they used to use Lottie, but now they're using Rive because it's interactive. They can do lip syncs. They can add sounds. There are so much that you can do with Rive. But with Lottie, Lottie is just static animation that is in the form of a vector. It's very limiting because you can't really control that animation or interact with it. So coming back over here, you can see that even Figma is using it. And the best part is that you can now use images like actual raster images. You can import Photoshop files, WebP files, and you can use them. And the file size is going to be lesser than Lottie files. And there's a bit of an information, there's, a, there's an article over here which talks about Rive and Lottie. Highly recommend you to check it out if you understand Lottie and you want to stop using Lottie and introduce Rive. As it mentions over here, Rive files are smaller, faster, and they take up less memory as well, right? And they're much simpler to use. But Rive is a little bit of a complicated tool, and that's why this course is structured in a way that helps you understand all the fundamental concepts in the easiest way possible, right? So you can do a bunch of hero animations. So you can take Rive animations, put them on your website and make them interactive. There are already a lot of Webflow and framework tutorials where they integrate Rive. You can do that. And of course, if you have a mobile app, you can add it to your mobile app as well. The interaction is pretty much the same, whether it's on web or on mobile app. You can have interactive forms. You can make things interactive. You can animate this. So for example, all you have to do is just animate it in Rive and give it to your developer. The developer does not have to do any animation. All they have to do is just create a trigger for tap and then the animation works on its own. There is so much that you can do over here. You can animate stuff. One of the best features is a concept called as bones, which basically enables character rigging, which is definitely not possible in Lottie. And not just that, as you can see, this is a Rive animation. And when you click on things, it can interact. It's, it's very realistic, right? Think of it as the closest you can come to a coded product, right? And as you can see over here, the star rating, you can click dynamically and it changes and it works very realistic, right? This was a really cool one. Cred recently used something like this for Cred Money, where the expenses, incomes, and investments in the Cred Money app change in height according to the values. And you can do cool stuff like parallax effects, which is phenomenal, micro interactions, and create all sorts of interfaces, 
So this is enough to prove how powerful Rive actually is. So now let's talk about Play. Now Play is a tool that's available only for macOS and iPhone. So if you don't have an iPhone or you don't have a MacBook, then you will not be able to actually use Play. I don't know if they have plans to bring this to Windows and Android apps, but for now, definitely this is something that you cannot use. However, Rive is something that you can still learn no matter which phone you have or whether you have a Windows or a MacBook, but Play is something that's only specific for iPhone. So if you go to the end of the video and check out the QR code, you can probably open it only if you have an iPhone or else you will not be able to do it, right? So that's just one thing to keep in mind. But Play is mainly used to create actual prototypes. It's not used to create animations per se, but it's actually prototypes. Think of it as a no-code tool for apps. Just, just the way we have Webflow and Framer for creating real websites, Play is used to create real prototypes. However, this is not going to let you create real apps. Think of it as a very advanced, high-level, sophisticated prototyping tool, right? So here are just a couple of examples that you see over here and you can come here and check out and actually understand what you can actually do with Play. There's a lot of stuff that you can do and you can make it look as close as you can with real products. And with version 2.0, they released a bunch of new features and I'm gonna be covering a couple of them in this course. Right? If you want to see how this works, you can just scan this app clip with your phone and you will actually see one of their prototypes and they have a bunch of stuff. So you can use gyroscopes, you have scroll triggers, you can use camera features. There is so much you can do with this. Play basically allows you to do everything that you can do with an iPhone. You can recreate pretty much any type of animation that you see in an iPhone, right? And this is done basically using native elements. You can create custom elements if you want, but you get all the native elements right out of the box with the logic there and all you have to do is just configure it here and there. And the best part about this is that it takes care of the responsiveness. So you can create a prototype on any device. You can send it to anybody who has an iPhone and irrespective of which iPhone they have, the prototype is going to scale properly. It's going to size things properly. Text is going to be properly aligned and you don't really have to create for multiple devices. It just acts like a real app on your phone. And this is super powerful. And as you can see, it gives you everything. You can create charts, you have materials and vibrancy, you have SF symbols, you can even add haptic feedback so you can actually trigger an animation and you can feel the vibration. You can do all sorts of things with camera. Even gyroscope is one of my favorite things, right? So there's so much that you can do. The, the tool can be a little intimidating because obviously every time you learn a new tool, it can be quite intimidating, but I'm going to make that process very easy for you. And finally, as you can see, it gives you all Swift UI code that you can export and provide to your engineers to make things a little faster for them. Right? You can either make a static component and just export the code and give it to them, or you can go ahead and make the animation also and then configure all the settings and values and properties and then give it to the engineer and then it'll work very well for them, right? So that's everything about Play. Now, finally, this is the QR code for you to scan. You can scan this on your iPhone and then have a look at it. You can play around with the prototype and let me know what you think. So the next video, we're gonna finally go ahead and start looking into this animation. We'll start off in Figma where I'm gonna go ahead and create a storyboard that helps us understand how the animation is set up because depending on the sequence of events and logic and conditions, the way we do things in Rive and Play is going to very much change. Even the smallest change can have a lot of different impacts. So it's important for us to understand everything in the, at the beginning. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me in the comment section down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. See you guys in my next video. So then take care and bye-bye.